Hey folks, this is Grease Scotsman. Welcome to the Mero SDK tutorial series on creating a level in BoneLab. This segment will not cover any steps in creating the level, but instead offers a monologue on workflow recommendations. Step-by-step -step level building will occur in the next segment, so skip this if you already have a game plan or design philosophy. This segment is intended for all the new modders out there who are just taking their first brave steps into a very complicated and confusing world. The first decision to make when designing a level is how you want to create your geometry. This guide will cover two main options. Use Blender to create a series of models that can be imported into Unity, or install ProBuilder and build directly in the editor. The Blender option is recommended due to the greater fidelity and flexibility you have at your fingertips. But ProBuilder is often a new mapper's starting point since it's included directly with Unity, and we want all of Lava Gang to be able to create. How you decide to handle your own workflow will be entirely up to you. I've done all kinds of things, sketches on paper, photos and reference material gleaned from around the internet, random art that inspires architectural shapes and ideas. One of the areas where Blender shines in this regard is that you can import an image and use it as a reference so that you can constantly have it on hand, either overlaid or in the background of whatever you're building. This can be really handy when it comes down to getting proper environmental scale. This tutorial will walk through creating a firing range. Yes, there's already a much cooler one in Vanilla Bone Lab, but a firing range is a clear concept. It's a nearly single room map with easy lighting and simple geometric shapes. It will also allow this series to cover the spawnable system, making some cool things with configurable joints, and make use of the alt events trigger system. For those completely new to creating levels from scratch in Unity, start with a basic geometric shape, like a cube, and modify it through extruding and phase scaling until you create the environment that you want. The common method for making indoor levels is to start with a cube, form it into a room, flip the normals so that the faces that were facing out are now facing in, and place the player inside. My workflow for this was to look up general real-world sizes for indoor firing ranges. I grabbed a few reference images along the way and decided which parts I wanted to scale to reality and which didn't make sense or weren't worth including at all. The first thing that I ever do when creating a level is to import a Ford model directly into Blender so that I have a constant 3D reference for human-sized scaling. If you don't have a Ford model handy, you can grab the mannequin off of Mixamo or most any humanoid model as they tend to follow Unity's measurement system and stick to real-world units. Those are pretty much the same size, and so all you really want is something that gives you a scaling reality check. As I make hallways, tunnels, and doorways, I will drag this model around and make sure that the scale makes sense. Next. I'm a huge fan of white boxing. White boxing is where you simply let your creativity flow. Don't care about crappy 3D structure or engons or randomly slapping cubes and spheres and cylinders together. Forget any worry about optimization. Instead, focus on making a rough 3D outline of the level. It's a bit like storyboarding a movie, where you can block out the general design, flip the normals, slap a mesh collider on it, which you only do for testing, we will cover proper collidering later, but it is useful so that you can spawn into the level and give it a test run before putting in tons of extra time trying to put in lots and lots of detail or getting the lighting perfect. Test things out first. The only targets you're trying to hit with white boxing are, does the level work? And does your gameplay concept seem fun or at least interesting? Or is it a dud? One of the most frustrating feelings as a designer is to put tons of time and energy into something just to discover that it sucks. Here's probably my biggest design tip and reality check. Your first idea is almost always a bad one. By employing a white box to gray box workflow, it means that you don't mind tossing a bad idea on the cutting room floor because you haven't poured your heart and soul into it. It also means that you can spot problems while the geometry is simple and easy to manipulate. Once you've spent hours detailing something, making adjustments becomes increasingly difficult and we humans have a tendency to want to hold on to something that we've invested in even if we know deep down that it's crap. So for this test level, and again, only for testing purposes, I slapped a mesh collider on the level and I cut my ear and listened to see if I could hear happy-go-crazy face humming from the west coast. I hopped into the map, spawned in a few items and tested. Scale was okay, a bunch I would change if I were going to make this into a proper release, but definitely good enough for tutorial purposes. The next step is to gray box. This is where we use the rough cut 3D model that we already have as a guide for making a proper mesh. During this pass, take care to create efficient geometry and break up your meshes in ways that allow for both clean UV creation and efficient colliders. 
Since you already have the shape, scale, and layout that you're making, planning efficient geo in the step is much easier than trying to worry about it on the white box pass. Gray boxing also means adding detail and taking time to make things look nice, because you know it won't be wasted effort. You've already tested your idea, and you know it's sound. I've also found that ideas come to me about how I can add detail while I'm creating the gray box mesh. Thankfully, because we took time to make efficient geometry, setting up the UVs and getting them aligned will be fairly straightforward. Hopefully these thoughts on workflow will come in handy for the new modder looking to dive into creating something from their own imagination and bringing it into Bone Lab. In the next segment, these ideas will be put into practice as the firing range's geometry is brought into Unity and proper colliders are constructed so the level and any objects in it play well with the Bone Lab physics system. See you in the void.